In this video, we will talk about how to evaluate an existing cybersecurity program. Sooner or later, the question will arise among project leadership of how you know if your cybersecurity program is working. Is the plan your security team developed a good one? Is the plan you've been using for years really doing anything? These questions can be almost as daunting as the original ones about how to start a security program. The danger here is that you might just ignore these questions. It's easy to become complacent with the development of a plan. You might think that since you have one, everything is okay. However, this is not the case. An important part of any cybersecurity program is to have regular reviews. How do you go about doing that? What should you look at? We will now talk about some of the things you need to consider when you are judging the effectiveness of your cybersecurity program. You might be concerned that your lack of knowledge in cybersecurity will make you an unqualified candidate to decide if the plan is any good. This is not true. There are a number of indicators that you can look for that have little to do with actual security. Can you understand the plan? If you can't understand, that's not a good sign. Plans should be straightforward and well laid out. Complexity can add confusion, and length is not always a sign of thoroughness. Are there goals and metrics identified in the plan? There should be a clear way to measure the success or failure of the program as it is running. The plan should indicate how you will measure the results of the program. Have all of the people involved bought into the plan? If the stakeholders and other important leaders don't believe in it, then nothing will ever happen. If you don't like what you see in it, or think that you will not be able to abide by it, then there's no point in going forward. A plan has to be workable and support your goals. Are the goals you have for the project going to be met by the plan? Are the assets you are concerned about being protected by the plan? Does the plan lay out what everyone's role and responsibility is? Considering these big picture topics can go a long way in determining the effectiveness of a cybersecurity plan and the creation of a good security program. Another tool you have is looking at the NSF Cooperative Agreement. Even if you are not obligated to abide by the agreement, it's a good document to look at. There is specific language found there about what the NSF wants to see in a functioning cybersecurity program. Use that language as a checklist for a review of your program. Does your plan outline and include roles and responsibilities, risk assessment, technical, administrative, and physical controls, policies and procedures, awareness and training, notification procedures, and evaluation criteria employed to assess the success of the program. If any of these are missing, your plan needs to go back and address them before you should accept it. There will always be tension between the needs of the user community for your project and the desires of the security program. Security will always want to lock things down as tight as they can, to control the system as much as possible, and make it so that the threats have a very difficult time affecting the system. However, this is often at odds with what is needed by the user community for your system. Does the plan address this? Does the plan go too far one way or the other? Security can be thought of in terms of prevention, detection, and response. We talked about those topics in other videos, but a good program will have controls in all three of those areas. Does the plan you have in place do that, or is it focused on only one or two of those areas? Your plan should cover technical controls, but also call out specific administrative controls that need to be developed. These are policies and procedures that need to be created and put in place so that everyone on your team knows how things work. There should also be a section in your plan that talks about ongoing training of staff. Security training is important to remind team members and users regularly about the importance and need for security. Remember, every rule has exceptions. Is it clear, and okay with you, who gets to make the exceptions to the policy? Your plan should call out who is the authority that authorizes each exception. The plan should also include directions on which items can have exceptions and which can't. Balance is very important to a plan and program. 
What about an existing program? How do you evaluate that? The first thing you need to determine is if the existing plan is even being followed. Or is it like so many documents, just sitting on a bookshelf gathering dust? If no one is following the plan, that's a good indication that there is a problem with it. If the plan is being followed, the next thing you should ask is, is it being reviewed and updated? Security needs change. Risks to the project change over time. These need to be reevaluated and addressed. Make sure these reviews are happening and that this is a priority to your security team. As mentioned earlier, a good plan will lay out goals and metrics for the program. Are those being met? Do the metrics actually indicate if the program is working? As time passes, are the numbers of incidents decreasing? Are the goals of the project being met, or is the security program hindering those? These are all indicators that can be looked at when evaluating the successfulness of an existing cybersecurity program. In this video, we have talked about how to evaluate an existing cybersecurity program. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI 1234408.